Today, farmers are using fuel cultivators almost as primary tillage tools. The sweep itself, instead of running in, in soil that has been loosened by a, by a plow or a chisel plow or disc harrow, um, the soil isn't, isn't, hasn't been loosened. This could be very easily the only pass that the field will get. So the point loads had to be increased to keep, keep the sweep at the proper angle. We want to define a very uniform soil profile and that, that means a, a flat seed bed. If the sweeps start pulling back, well then that, uh, that arrowhead shaped sweep now becomes more like a, like a, a dagger going through the soil and it, we get a very uneven uh, soil profile. Well, field cultivator um, has always been a seedbed preparation tool. Um, it's evolved over the years from, at one point in time, uh, I think our field cultivator had a, an 85 pound point load shank, which means that's, that's the brake force that the shank would start to move back if it hit an object. And today that, that shank is now a 190 pound point load. And that's because farmers are using field cultivators differently. What farmers are really looking for and, and should look for uh, when they purchase a field cultivator is the, the actual construction of the cultivator itself, particularly in the, the larger sizes, five sections and such. We actually, uh, when we designed that frame, we built um, a torture tool, if you will. We tried several different frame designs and um, methods of construction. Uh, we actually bought competitors' frames and put them on this, this tool. Our final frame design on the 5056 field cultivator far outlasted anything else that uh, we, we compared it to. When you have a five section, 63 footer all folded up, there's a tremendous amount of weight on the center section. So there are large tires, walking tandems to carry that load. And then we also put uh, what we call an A-frame tongue. And the, uh, the tongue design goes underneath that center section frame, almost to the rear of the tool. All that weight then is um, is supported by the uh, the tongue frame, which you won't find that that uh, underneath tongue frame on competitive tools. It's just not there. In today's market, um, field cultivators they're, they're built one of two ways. They're either uh, called a uh, floating hitch field cultivator or level lift hitch. And in the larger sizes, uh, 40 feet and above, the uh, floating hitch is, becomes a, a, a real plus, a real advantage in in the field. Most companies, well, I guess with all companies except Sunflower, you have to decide if you want the level lift hitch and the pluses of that or the floating hitch and the, the pluses and negatives of, of the floating hitch. With Sunflower, you don't have to make that decision because our larger field cultivators have both. It's a level lift uh, in transport for secure and uh, safe, excellent control of the tool in transport and it's a floating hitch in the field to follow ground contours. Most field cultivators are on a six inch shank spacing. They are spread over the, uh, the depth of the frame. Ours are, are uniform across the width of the tool, not having to break that, that uh, uniform pattern of the shanks because of tires or something else that might be in the way. Uh, our engineers designed the shank pattern first and then placed the tires. The sweets themselves, they, they move through the soil and um, Everything is, is treated evenly from one side of the field cultivator to the other and front to rear. Now, with field cultivators and as much as 63 feet wide as we have in our product group, farmers can cover a lot of ground. Uh, they're pushing the, uh, the speed limit on them some now, but um, field cultivators very easily can uh, attain and do an excellent job at eight miles an hour. So that's become a tool that um, farmers are really uh, starting to uh, key in on again. It's simple, they're easy to maintain, and they do an excellent, excellent job.